Hello. Today we are doing Chapter 2, Section 5 in the Algebra 1 book. Our essential question is how can you use inequalities to describe intervals on the real number line? Well, an interval is going to be a section. So let's take a second and look at our first example. A number x is greater than negative 8 and less than or equal to 4. So we've kind of got two scenarios here. It has to be bigger than negative 8 and smaller than 4. The key word there is and. So a number is greater than and less than. So we've actually got two inequalities there. So what that means is x is in between those two numbers. That's how I always think about it. And our smallest number is negative 8, and if you notice it's pointing to the negative 8, that's still pointing to the negative 8. Here, it's pointing to the x, it's still pointing to the x, needing the 4. So x is in between negative 8 and 4. It's bigger than negative 8, smaller than 4. The way you would graph that is you need to have an open circle at 8, negative 8, and a closed one at 4. And if you were to graph each of those individually, they would overlap in this section. And that is our solution. All right, on part B, a number y is at most 0 or at least 2. Well, on this one, we have the word or. That means it can be either of them. So a number, y is at most 0. So y is less than or equal to 0. Or at least 2. At least, it can be bigger, so it would be greater than or equal to 2. So on this one, we've got that or, and we need to make sure we write or down. Because when you graph it, you're going to have two sections. This isn't always the case, but probably 90% of the time, if you've got or, it's going to be going in opposite directions. If you've got the word and, it's typically going to overlap. I don't want to make a blanket statement of saying that's going to be the case always, because there are some exceptions where they might be pointing the same direction or overlapping completely. But um, that's typically going to be true. And you shade between, or is going to typically be in opposite directions. So a number D is more than 0 and less than 10. Key right there is and, so it has to be bigger than 0 and less than 10. And it doesn't include those two numbers, so we're going to be using open dots. So number two, a number a is fewer than negative six, or, keyword there, or no less than negative three. So it's fewer than negative six, that means it's smaller, or no less than, that'd be greater than or equal to negative three, that's bigger. All right, on this one, if we notice, we have a compound inequality, or an interval, and we have in the center x minus 2. Our goal is to get that x by itself. So I'm going to separate that into two inequalities. And if you're kind of a visual person, you might think of it like this. Here's your first one. Negative 4 is less than x minus 2. Let's just do the next one in another color. My next inequality is going to be x minus 2 is less than 3. And what you're going to do is you're going to solve each one of those. And you're going to get negative 2 is less than x. And x is less than 5. I typically will accept either answer. I could take this as the answer. And I will take that as an answer as well. If you want to get fancy, look up the um, topic interval notation. 
and see if there is a third way that you might want to write those. If you want to learn about interval notation, come into MathLab or IPASS. All right, I almost skipped part B. Oh, forgot the graph too. You're going to shade in between those two numbers. On B, we're going to go ahead, we're going to separate that into two inequalities as well. Negative 3 is less than negative 2x plus 1. And it's a less than Did I say we were going to separate these into two inequalities? I just totally lied to you. We're going to keep it as one. We're just going to show you another way to do it. We're going to subtract one from everything. And then we're going to divide by negative two. The trick on this one is since we're dividing everything by negative two, we're going to have to flip the direction of that inequality. So our solution negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. And they rewrote that because typically you want your smallest number over to the left. And on this one, you're going to be shading in between negative 4 and 2, and you're going to have a closed dot at negative 4. So instead of separating it into two inequalities this time, they just kept it as one, but they did it to the left, to the middle, and to the right. All right, on this one, we've got the or, so we're going to take each one of those and solve them separately. Add 5, divide by 3, y is less than negative 1. Look at the second one, you're going to add 1, divide by 2, y is greater than 3. So you're going to graph those, and when you graph them, y is less than or one, negative 1, open dot. y is greater than 3, open dot, shaded to the right. All right, here are six problems for you to try on your own. I will give you a hint. Problems 3 and 4, more than likely, are going to have shading in between. 5 and 6, more than likely, are going to have shading in opposite directions because of the word for. Hit pause. When you're ready to check your answer, hit pause again. All right. On this one, we're going to have a word problem. Electrical devices should operate effectively within a specified temperature range. Outside that temperature range, the device may fail. Write and solve a compound inequality that represents the possible operating temperature in prototype of the smartphone. And we can describe a situation in which the temperature could be below the operating range and one in which it could be above. All right. Key here is Fahrenheit, but I'm noticing right away that they're giving this to us in Celsius. They're trying to be tricky. I'm not going to fall for that trick. So in part of my plan, I'm going to have to convert those temperatures to Fahrenheit. So it has to be greater than zero, less than 35. And C is the same thing as... 5 ninths times quantity F minus 32. So to get rid of that 5 ninths, get rid of that denominator, multiply each term by 9. Now to get rid of that 5, we're going to divide each term. Oh, I am totally like to you. We're going to distribute first, add 160. Now we're going to divide by 5. And it has to be between 30 to 32 degrees F and 95 degrees F. Um, did anybody think about actually just converting the temperatures first and then writing the inequality? 
I think that's probably the plan I would have gone with, but this way it's 100% acceptable. If you wanted to convert your temperatures first and then write the inequality, I think that's fine as well. I think these examples are a little bit extreme. Um, you don't necessarily have to be in a winter in Alaska to get below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you don't have to be in the Mojave Desert to be above 95. But there are two examples. All right, try this one on your own. Again, degrees Fahrenheit, they're giving it to us in Celsius. be negative 40 is less than or equal to F is less than or equal to 59. And that seems reasonable for the operating temperature of boots. All right, hope you enjoyed compound inequalities. As always, you are welcome to come into Math Lab or I pass.